The things that you do in your everyday life could be perfect indicators that you'd be a good fit for an analytical role. And you don't even need to have a background in tech, finance, or statistics to be successful. So take this five part quiz with me and if you score a four or higher, then you are literally built for this type of career. So let's go. If you already go to data to solve problems in your life, then that's one of the best indicators that an analytical career would be really great for you. So let's say you are someone that analyzes your past spending history to determine if you can make a big purchase. Or maybe you're someone that goes to the scoring history of your favorite player to determine if you should make a bet on tonight's hockey game. I often hate to admit it, but... I'm a Leafs fan, okay? I said it, I'm a Leafs fan. This year I'm trying not to care. I'm trying really hard not to care about hockey, but as the playoffs get closer and closer, it's getting harder and harder not to care. I know I'm just gonna be let down again. I know it, they do it every year. Oh, why am I a fan? So if that's the case, you're already doing things in your everyday life that an analyst would do. Now, some examples of this in the real career world would be maybe an actuarial analyst. They would be able to use their analytical skills to analyze insurance claims and help determine if the insurance company needs to increase premiums over the next year. A uh, data analyst might be using their skills to optimize a commercial, let's say, for the Super Bowl. They'd be able to figure out what went well last year and what can we do next year to make this commercial work even better. If you've ever created an Excel formula that was really complex and afterwards you felt really good about it and excited about it, well, that's another sign that you'd be great for an analytical role. That right there is proof that you would probably really love coding if you don't already know how to do it. And if you do know how to do it and you love it, well, that's a great sign as well. This is also something that you don't need to be an expert in as you get into an analytical role. It is going to be something that you want to know and you can learn this stuff by yourself. You can sit on the couch and learn this while your kids are sleeping at night. No, not like that. It's not going to be difficult, it just takes time and commitment. What really helped me was doing projects and I highly encourage you to do that as well once you learn a programming language. Do a bunch of projects that you can talk about during interviews. Do projects in maybe your current position that you're working in now that will help in that role but also help you learn some programming skills. That's going to make a big difference when it comes to applying for analytical careers. By the way, if you've been liking this video so far and found it helpful, could you please give this a video a thumbs up? to let the YouTube analytics master know that you've liked it. Thank you so much. All right, so have you ever justified a large purchase to your spouse by breaking it down into a cost per use? Like let's say for an example, a gym membership, you know, back when um, running and chasing your kids wasn't your exercise. <laughs> Maybe you went to a gym and it would be $700 for an annual membership, whereas monthly you were paying, I don't know, $150. That's an expensive gym membership, $100. So what you did was break it down to determine how much is this actually going to cost me per use. And maybe you even tried to justify that you would use the gym more often if you had already paid upfront for this big annual membership. So that's one example. And this type of thinking is you putting numbers into stories. And that's something you're going to have to use in an analytical role as well. Um, as an example, in an actuarial analyst context, maybe you have to explain why removing certain benefits from a health and wellness plan might actually increase the risk exposure to an insurance company. A data scientist might have to explain why their model is set up the way it is so that the legal team can understand it. Turning data into stories is something that's really important in an analytical career. So proof that you've done that in the past is a great indicator that this is something you can do in a career too. Okay, so are you someone that often spots inconsistencies in different forms and reports? Or are you someone that double checks all their calculations before they give it off to someone else? Or are you someone that often finds patterns that other people miss? If so, those are indicators that you have a great eye for detail. And this is something that's really important in an analytical career. Think about this example for a second. Back in 2012, JP Morgan lost billions of dollars because the formula in one of their Excel spreadsheets used a sum formula instead of an average formula. And that caused them a whole bunch of trouble. That's something that 
an analytical person needs to be able to catch. Another thing about this is if there's inaccuracies and inconsistencies in your reports, then that's going to lead people to lose trust in you. So this is a really important part of any analytical role. Now, by the way, when I do one-on-one -on -one resume review sessions with anyone looking to get into an analytical role, one of the things I see most often that I am always giving feedback on is inconsistencies on their resume. So this is something that you should check your resume for too. Sometimes I see that dates are in different formats. So sometimes they'll put only the first three letters of the month and then the year. Other places they'll type out the whole year or sometimes they'll be capitals instead of lowercase and then lowercase and some capitals. Sometimes you'll see long dashes and short dashes. So there's this mix of different formatting all through the resume that does not appeal to employers that are looking for people that have high attention to detail. So make sure, double check, triple check, that your resume does not have that. Would your eyes light up if someone asked you to look into why sales dropped last quarter? Or would you find it really difficult to stop right in the middle of doing a Sudoku puzzle? Mommy, I'm hungry. So am I, but we have bigger problems right now. Analytical careers are all about using data to solve problems and to explain events. So if you're always curious to dig into the details and you find yourself going back to problems over and over and over again in your mind until you finally come up with a solution, then you're going to love analytics. Loving what you do and feeling excited about it is honestly, I believe, one of the most important things to look for in a career. It is what keeps you motivated. It's what keeps you inspired and energized. It makes you feel like you really want to go to work rather than dreading it. And there are so many people that stay in careers that they absolutely hate and they stay in those careers because they are afraid of what it might be like to transition into another career. They think things like, am I too old for this? Am I going to have to take a pay cut? They think there must be so many other people out there that would be a better fit for the role. So why even try? If that's you, if you've ever thought those things and you absolutely need to go watch this video next, because it is going to give you the fix so that you can start an analytical career as soon as possible. Thank you so much to those of you that have decided to stay to the end of the video today. Now, at the time this video is released, I'm actually going to be heading to California. It'll be my first time ever being there, so I'm super excited about that. Our plans are to go see the Golden Gate Bridge. We're going to spend a few days in Yosemite National Park hiking with two little kids. I'm not sure how that's gonna go. They're both under the age of three, but we'll see. Um, and then we are also going to go to a hockey game. So my favorite team is the Toronto Maple Leafs and my husband's favorite team is the San Jose Sharks. So while we are there, those two teams are actually going to be playing each other. Um, so that's something that that we will probably never see again as those two teams play because they usually only play two times per year and it's crazy expensive to get a ticket for them to see them closer to where I am. So we decided to take advantage of being there while they are playing and go see that. Um, so I think the Leafs are gonna win. Um, they are doing a lot better than the Sharks this year, but we will see as anyone that's a Leaf fan would know, um, tend to surprise you sometimes. <laughs> so that's exciting. The thing that is not so exciting is me finding out on the news a few days ago at the time I'm recording this, that an airplane, a Delta airplane, crashed in the exact airline or airport that I'm going to be flying out of and flying back into. So that's pretty scary. Um, I still know that statistically speaking, it's a lot safer to fly than it is to drive. So I guess that's a little bit of reassurance. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but anyway, we are going to be flying with two little kids under three. So you are gonna have to wish me luck. Um, if you have any traveling advice for kids that small, I would love to hear it because we have not gone on an airplane with both of them before. I'm worried about some crying along the way. <laughs> anyway, that's all for me. I hope to see you in two weeks from now in my next video. Bye.